Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 3 vs 3 on Bois de la Moise and in this one I'm playing the 15th Infantry Scots Division. So sorry if I just butchered the name of the map but that's the best I could do. And I'm going to be playing today with Enzo and Haymaker who are going to be using the 101st Airborne and 3rd Canadian Infantry respectively. We are playing against the 116th Panzer Division, that's the Windhund, the 17th SS Panzer Grenadier, and a third Forschermjäger. So, this was uh, set to be quite an interesting game, and I will go to our point of view so I can talk us through our strategy. And as you can see, I was starting to place down units in the middle of the map, so that's basically the sector that I was uh, assigned throughout this game. I was going to help Enzo on the left with the right side of the forest here, and then I was going to cover this middle section, whilst Haymaker takes the right section, and Enzo takes the left side of the forest. So he is playing the 101st, which actually suits the forest really well because he does have the airborne engineers available, which are really, really useful for forest combat like this. Uh, furthermore, he also has a good range of uh, mortars and recon, and, uh, and he's, he even has some AT guns here, which he's going to be using to cover the road, which is quite important. I'm going to be using AT guns to cover the road on the right. I've also got a machine gun for there. Uh, aside from that, I've just got a bunch of rifles with a command infantry at the moment. And I'll just speed it up so we can see the rest of the troops that I'm deciding to bring in. Got a unit on this right side as well. That's just another machine gun to help me cover off the right side at the start of the game. This here is carrying a tripolston. I decided to bring in a tripolston at the start of the game. I thought it would be a really good unit uh, to just tear apart infantry in the forest here so I was kind of going for I think this position where I have the really good line of sight to like the edge of the tree lines without being in range of the opposing infantry myself and I've got actually another one over on this left side as well so I actually had two in the end if I just uh, shift click you can see I'm bringing one to here bringing one to here and then all of my infantry is going to be going up the road and advancing through the right side forest. Whilst Enzo is going to be uh, covering the left side, you can see all of his troops moving out to different locations there. Over in the centre, just using this as a defensive point, going to be using a machine gun in there alongside an AT gun at the end of the tree line. I've got a couple units of rifles to spread out here as well, just to provide some presence. And then I've got uh, a machine gun for the right side with this AT gun as well. That's pretty much my setup over on this far right. Haymaker's going to be relying on his rams at the start of the game alongside a Humber Mark IV. So very armor-focused start from Haymaker. Would have liked to have seen more infantry from him, but it's fine. As long as he gets his six-pounder up to the point where he can stop anything coming towards him, it's absolutely fine. And he's got a couple more six-pounders as well here, alongside my six-pounder. So anything coming down this road is going to get annihilated at the start of the game. And that was the plan. The Ram 2s can do quite well if they can stop things uh, advancing across the open here. But if the opposing force moved uh, infantry down here with fast move and then ran through these hedgerows he might have a hard time stopping them from advancing with his rams alone. By the way I'm going to be starting to bring up my recon since I didn't have enough uh, points to afford that at the start of the game and the rifles are going to do my recon for me in the forest so that wasn't uh, necessary however these chaps these are going to scout for the AT guns on uh, both sides of the middle to make sure that I have uh, information there. And I'm also actually going to bring one over to the forest as well because, I mean, any anywhere recon is really useful actually. In this case, yeah, the rifles will basically spot out any infantry they come up against, of course, but the scouts will actually reveal them before they come under fire. So that's really good. So Enzo using the airborne engineers here behind an airborne leader. Preferably the airborne leader would have been behind the airborne engineers, but that's okay. Um, he can get these airborne engineers to burn out any of the enemy we come up against. Over on the right side, 
Um, we can pretty much tell who we're up against. This is the um, 17th SS Panzer player here on the far right due to the SBW221 and the Stug 3. Those two units very much give away that deck. In the center, this is where the uh, Windhund player is going to be. And so I'm just covering that off. And unfortunately, Haymaker did lose one of his rams already to the Stug 3. But I've managed to get my AT gun on target here to the SPW 231 or 221. So that's okay. Now the engagement is going to be starting in the forest, and with both of the players identified on the right, it means that we're going to be having the Volschmeger division on the left. And this is a, a little bit of an issue because Volschmegers are actually really, really strong infantry. But shouldn't be really a match for the airborne engineers if Enzo can keep them in cover and then engage them at the 100 meter range. Over on the right side here, Enzo's Pathfinders are going to be attacked by these Panzer Grenadiers. I'm going to keep my rifles from being engaged by uh, the fire support and the Panzer Grenadier squad as well. I'm just trying to get my uh, Tripolstons into position to provide covering fire. And here you can see what happens is the MG34 is revealed. And it is going to fire onto the Tripolston, but the Tripolston has 13 HE power and it's going to tear apart the MG34. Going to be definitely pinning that down very, very quickly. Also, with the help of Enzo's mortars, we managed to dispatch the MG34 there quite nicely. We've got the scouts coming up now. Should have had them unloaded, but that's okay. Uh, I've unloaded the uh, recce into here. They're advancing, revealing the half tracks that have come across the river there and I do use the six pounder to take out one of them. Panzer Grenadiers are still out in the open there and my six pounders are busy holding off plenty of the units coming down on the right side now. So there goes a recon vehicle. I managed to transmission damage this 221 so that's not going very far. And over on the right side Haymaker still holding his ground. He's brought up another Humber Mark IV and he's bringing up a Humber Mark III with some recon. He has a Piat squad here, that's okay, but preferably there should be re there should be some infantry on this right side. These recon squads might not be enough, honestly, but it worked out. The Axis players are actually at a plus one on us at the moment. They are gaining points. We haven't really made enough ground across the map, but myself and Enzo were working together to try and pin down and take out these Falsham units. So the Falsham Jäger and the Falsham Führer. The airborne engineers are advancing towards the Fuhrer. Once they get 100 with, within 100 meter range, the airborne engineers can really have a good time killing off the Fuhrer. So there you go, there goes the napalm and um, burning out that squad. The airborne rifle is going to be finishing off the kill there. Fuhrer engaging airborne rifles at close range. This is a pretty even matchup, honestly. And the one star Fulshimir goes up against one star airborne rifles. Very even matchup. Although, honestly, airborne rifles do actually have 11 HE on target, whereas the Fulshimir only have 6. So, airborne rifles are actually going to win out in that engagement. Unfortunately for Enzo, his 60mm uh, mortar here gets attacked by a Spear Troop. And that's annoying is uh, it means we won't have that mortar support available but that's okay just trying to get my tripolston away from that uh, the mmg carrier did spot them as they moved across and i do have some more rifles coming up here to help uh, basically screen through the forest so knowing that there's recon behind us um, the best way to deal with that is literally just to unload loads of like cheap infantry and just like walk through the forests and make sure that you've covered like every single part of the forest so that you know there's nothing else behind you Meanwhile in the middle, my AT guns were getting hit pretty hard, but that's okay. Um, it's not too much of an issue just yet. We are still obviously losing the plus one because we dropped back quite a, a lot of ground on this right side. But uh, Haymaker is now bringing up his infantry to uh, start to stabilize things, so that should really help. And I'm just going to be continuing to move through here with my rifles alongside uh, Enzo's airborne units. The airborne engineers there picking up the AT gun kill, which was quite nice. And my rifles here now discovering the spare troop, so I'm going to be engaging them. 
over on the left side. Just got to clear out these Falsham Jaegers and then maybe we could start to push the line further up and make back some ground. That was really what uh, we were trying to do currently. The rifle squad going to be enough to take out the spear troop on the on their own without any veterancy, so that was really good. And now I just got to continue through to support Enzo's airborne units at the edge of the forest. We know there's uh, some infantry here. We can't really advance into that just yet. Rifles aren't really a match for Volshemjägers, so that's a bit of a problem. But as the opponent actually brings in two ME109s, they bump straight in to my Tripolstons. So that manages to force at least one of them away, and he retreats the second. So cheekily, there is a Panzergrenadier squad trying to advance onto my six pounder it actually gets targeted by my machine gun carrier from this left side and I've got some rifles up here just to cover off the six pounder here because obviously I don't want the six pounders to die for free to the Panzergrens so I'm just bringing up the rifles there to engage them on the right side haymakers covering off with the storm stormtroopers these are basically elite Canadian infantry with really high HE power at close range 100 meter range they have 18 HE power and they have a 22 HE power satchel charge which basically blows up anything. Haymaker's going to be bringing up uh, Leo Major, Sniper Scouts and going to be getting those into cover hopefully before they get killed off. Stoss Troop going to be coming through the small tree patch here and well going to get pinned down pretty hard by the Bren guns. The engagement's still continuing up here. I can see uh, the Pathfinder's getting taken out by this two-star Panzergrenadier squad. This would be the, the Windhund player. It does have some very elite Panzergrenadiers at the start of the game that I do have to be very careful of. Over on this side, MG42 is going to be taken out by the Churchill 5. I'm, I'm bringing up two of these just to help with all of these fire support units that are being brought up against Haymaker and they're also great for just clearing out infantry. In this case rifle seven man squad versus one panzer grenadier eventually going to be taking those out and you can see here the 1200 meter range of the Churchill is no match for the 1000 meter range of an IG. So the IG is going to lose out in that case and we're able to take out that fire support unit in order to help us move on through these fields and I'm also bringing over a second one here so they are covered by a dingo as well this dingo is on a follow command of the Churchill and the way you can do that is to literally just click a unit and right click the unit you want it to follow and it will just follow it around so the dingo literally right here is just following this Churchill keeping its veterancy high the rifles have taken up their positions I'm slowly wheeling forwards uh, the Tripolstons as well to get them into a position where they can fire into the edge of the tree line at close range. Brought over my command carrier here to help pin down some of the Panzer Grenadiers and I've also got my six pounder opening up onto these half tracks and you can see two shots, two kills there. Really nice. Panzer Werfer did hit this location which is why it's on fire but didn't do particularly too much damage. Also moving over my command carrier and MOG carrier here now as well to help with this infantry. As you can see, Enzo has brought up his airborne engineers and it forces the Jaeger unit to surrender. This one on the left side gets hit very hard by the Tripolstons and then surrenders as well. So Enzo basically leading the charge with those engineers in order to make back the ground at the top of the forest here. Because we really need to get 50-50 at this point. Our opponents are still running at plus one lead over us, so we are on, well, at a deficit of 680 points to the enemy, which is really bad. We don't want that to continue to rack up, otherwise we will be in a really bad situation moving forwards. The Churchill's here, though, doing a fantastic job of uh, hitting the Panzergrenfuhrer and the IG-33 here. Buckerwolf 190s are going to be used to take out my 6 pounder that was left on low health. My MMG carrier here, that's able to use its machine guns to help pin a Panzergrenadier squad and help that get, well, help get rid of that. 
like a Nibblewerfer or a Panzerwerfer hit our center here in the forest. But uh, Enzo is still making ground, killing off the, both of these mortars really nicely. Maybe charging those chaps down. You can see he's now also bumping into two squads of Falschmjägers, and this is where airborne engineers are so damn effective. 100 meter range, he's pinned down all of these forces, and goodbye. They all surrendered. I didn't like those flamethrowers. That's two squads of Falschmjäger, a Falschmjäger, and he's just killed two mortars. So Enzo doing a fantastic job there with his infantry, clearing out this forest. Pretty much uh, my role in this forest is literally just to spread out rifles and I'd have these tripolstons in here just to literally provide us with an AA field on the left side of the map that we can use to take down all of these fighters that our opponent has invested into. And you can see how quickly that we stun the opposing aircraft with these tripolstons when they fly overhead. So I'm going to be bringing in my own Spitfires now just to dare them to attack me. And if they do, they're going to be forced to fly over the AA field and uh, we can jump onto the back of them after they get stunned and shoot them down. So that's what I'm trying to do here. You can see they're being swung across the AA because they targeted me and I'm able to just tell my Spitfires to go hunt them down. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So going for the kills here onto the one of the MOU 109 G6R6s. I managed to get just one before both of them retreat and I'm going to get my two Spitfires out of there before they get ambushed by the Focke-Wolf 190s that I know that the opponent had. Enzo's also going to be using my AA in order to uh, take the skies on this left side. But up here what's going to happen is since we've moved into phase B, Fulsion Pioneers have arrived and Fulsion Pioneers they have 22 HE power grenades and both my rifles and the airborne engineers of Enzo they all get hit by these 22 HG power grenades and get destroyed very quickly. What I'm doing here is leaving this one to sacrifice itself whilst this uh, full squad of rifles just continues to run away from these Fulsham pioneers and I'm just going to retreat the rest of my rifles away from this uh, section of trees entirely jump across the road into uh, friend the friendly trees on this side because the Fulsham Pioneers they need to be within the 100 meter range in order to throw those grenades so if I can pin them down before they can get in that range then that's great so I'm wheeling up my Tripolston here uh, in order to uh, take them out quick enough hopefully. Uh, Panzerwerfer coming in again going to be hitting my Tripolston here unfortunately and taking that out. Rifle leader does manage to survive and the six pounder is also alive so that's worked out quite well and I've got plenty of new infantry coming in these are my phase B rifles available in the Scots deck so a little bit more experienced than their predecessors and uh, able to do a little bit more damage the rifles again advancing with Enzo here and his airborne rifles and pathfinders to make a lot of ground on the left side we're now running 55 percent lead which uh, quickly extends on this far left side as we continue to push up and as you can see there's a big old diagonal going on at the moment Haymaker on the right side is making back the ground that we previously lost over here and my Churchill 5s are still supporting him off map artillery is coming in to help out against our advance and that is a pack 43. It's going to pop my dingo there. And I'm going to be trying to uh, retreat my Churchill. Since I don't want that to die either. So I'm just spreading out the uh, rifles here. Trying to probe where I can. You can see this rifle squad trying to move across the open. But it's going to get hit hard by the Panzer Grenadier there and forced to fall back. I do lose one of my Churchills to the Pack 43 because it couldn't uh, get out of line of sight quick enough. At your service, sir. Uh, but either way, um, Haymaker was trying to use his smoke now to cover our retreat and make sure that the uh, packs couldn't do what they needed to. I'm going to bring in my Spitfires on the right side. Can't really catch on to the Focke Wolf 190, but what I can do is catch on to the Ju 87. So going to be straight onto that 
and uh, our 50 cals eventually get the kill and kill it off. It's ME109 G0, going to be coming in to counter the Spitfires here, but one alone is not going to be enough. So I'm engaged in a prolonged dogfight at the moment. He's going to try and get out of there since I have brought in this Typhoon. And what I'm going to do with the Typhoon is try and uh, rocket this Pack 40 and then use the Typhoon to help deal with the ME109 G0. I do manage to take that out with one of the Spitfires in the end. So now I need something to counter Fortune Pioneers because as you can see here, Fortune Pioneers can still very much one-shot airborne engineer squads. So I've brought up my own Assault Pioneers. These are five-man squads with 22 uh, HE power satchel grenades and they can blow up a Fortune Pioneer squad and trade one for one with those to get rid of them, which is good enough for me. Do lose a 17 pounder on this right side. I believe it got uh, taken out as it was going along. And I also lose my six pounder in the forest there. I think it, the, the 17 pounder actually was lost here by Panzerwerfer, but uh, there we go. Over on this left side, we are making a lot of ground now. 55% still in our favor and my rifles are continuing to support uh, Enzo as he moves up. Now I'm doing my sweep with the Assault Pioneers, keeping a rifle leader nearby for the two-star veterancy. Assault Pioneers aren't great without their grenades, but as you can see they are good enough to take out a Fulsion Pioneers. And Fulsion Pioneers are worth 30 points, an Assault Pioneer squad is 15 points. If I can trade one Assault Pioneer squad for one Fulsion Pioneer squad, then I'm winning every time. And that's all I need to do in order to sweep through this forest. The only issue occurs if he can bring in more than I can and uh, then I need to find another way of killing off his Fulsion Pioneers. So continuing the push here, loads of smokers being put onto the enemy AT guns. I'm wheeling up another squad of rifles again just to push the front line as far forwards as I can on the right side because preferably we want to be sitting at a plus two and getting back the lead because currently we're still not in the lead, our opponent is with 684 points. My assault pioneers here, they're going to be engaging uh, enemy pioneers. These are uh, the pioneers from the SS Panzer Grenadiers. They've come over now to the forests to assist on this side. So. Elite Source has called upon Yellow Submarine to give them a hand and in come the Pioneers with their two 22 HG power grenades and they're going to be killing off my Assault Pioneers. I'm trying to get this chap over because he's the only one with a grenade left. That's going to be destroying the enemy Pioneers there. Fantastic. Going to be jumping and bump, well, bumping into another squad of Pioneers and we've got to kill them before they reload their grenade. Thankfully we do, and I've made quite a lot of uh, ground into here. this forest now. Enzo's being pushed very hard on this left side. My rifles did get killed as they advance. I've got one squad Wake left up, now boys. on this left it's side. Enzo's machine gun is going to be engaging the Fulsion Pioneers here. And I've also got my rifles into range now, so hopefully going to pin those down before they can get close enough to throw a grenade, if they have any left that is. Because there's a very good possibility that they don't have any ammo left and well since we have them so close to being pinned down in the first place, airborne engineers do come in with the flamethrower and finish things off. One of the grenades was thrown onto the MG squad so that did end up happening anyway. We can't take this anymore. That's okay. Enzo's still reinforcing himself on that left side and now they're coming, he's coming up with the multiple M5A1 Stuarts and the M22 Locust and he also has two M10A1 tank destroyers. Our planes are flying another sortie above, covered by all of our AA here. I've got uh, three Tripolstons covering this left side. These rifles getting hit very hard by the opposing Gepards. These are enemy anti-air. Over on the right side, the Focke Wolf 190 is coming in for the kills 
onto the priests, but not going to be able to pull that off. There's Churchill 5 here still providing uh, some form of fire support for Haymaker on the right side as we're trying to deal with the enemy AT guns, but he takes transmission damage, is going to be forced back there. Rifles have been sneaking forwards and Haymaker's also been doing pretty well getting his own infantry to sneak forwards as well. On this right side probably shouldn't have had so many infantry squads close together. But he's, I think he's just trying to keep them hidden at the moment and stop them from being destroyed by the IG-18 and the MG-42s. Just letting his uh, priests get on target in order to take out those units. By the way, the Windhund player does surrender. So we're playing against one AI now. One of my Typhoons does go down to the multiple ME109s, but we repay the kill with Enzo's Mustang. I've now got my Spitfires back on the field. They were a little bit late to the party this time round. Got my own Wolverine moving up here. These guys are going to help clean out the Spear Troop. And they're also there to clean up a lot of these Gepards and light vehicles that are just across the river. I think in the replay at this point, um, someone was like lagging in the game. So it actually made the entire game lag as a whole, which you can see is replicated in the replay. So just sorry about that. It does clean up after a little while. But I'll just use this uh, to talk about where we were in terms of our map positioning. So Haymaker is trying to make some ground on the right. He's covering his troops with uh, smoke. Uh, to try and get into the far right tree line, but he is being hit by the IJ-18. Like I said, preferably these units wouldn't have been so close together. It would have been a bit better if they weren't. But the Stormtroopers still making ground into the centre here, using their own uh, smoke grenades to cover themselves off while they make that engagement. I'm continuing to yes, probe sir. where I can with my rifles in the centre, and then uh, using my Wolverine here to try and pick off these Gepards and other light vehicles. And then up the top here, the engagement is still continuing against Volsham Pioneers. Rifles now having to take up the mantle of uh, fighting those guys one on one. And as you can imagine, that's not really going to end very well. Two star Volsham Pioneers versus rifle squads. Yeah. Our rifles do have 8 HE between them, but it's never really going to be good enough to uh, take care of them. So, unless I have Assault Pioneers with their grenades reloaded, I'm not really going to stand a chance. And here you can see Soul Pioneers and Rifles coming up against another Fulsion Pioneer squad. And one grenade's pretty much almost going to blow up both squads. So I'm just kind of trying to get my rifle leader out of there. I don't want to lose that. I want to maintain it for when I bring in some reinforcing infantry, which I'm definitely doing at this point. Enzo is going to be able to use his M10s to take out the enemy Stug on this side of things. So that goes down and opens up even more land on this left side. We've hit 59% territory now, sort of jumping between 58 and 59, but that's enough to give us a plus two now. And we're well over the axis points. So you can see the defensive line here is basically the, the river. There's a river that runs all the way down here. Uh, just to I think here where it goes into the trees and that's sort of providing a natural defense line for me at the moment allowing my M10 to sit on one side and if anything tries to come across these bridges it's going to get hit by either an ambush potential ambush up here or just a straight up ambush here from my Wolverine so he can't do that at the moment and that's an AI now so I don't necessarily have to worry about superior tactics necessarily Churchill 5 is not necessarily moving up with uh, Haymaker's units just yet, although it probably could have been. Uh, machine Gun Carrier also would have been useful to help support uh, this infantry on the right side, but Haymaker is just going to be trying to get his Stormtroopers into close range there to take on the enemy Sloth's troop. Focke-Wolf 190G1, the bomber variant, is going to get shot down there. Two Focke-Wolfs are going to be coming in to take on the Spitfires. I don't necessarily want to engage them over opposing AA. But as you can see, he comes in over our 50 caliber machine guns, and that does provide enough for Enzo to get on his tail 
with the Mustangs. My Spitfire's coming round here, that's trying to get onto the tail of the Focker Wolf to finish it off. And I also have this Focker Wolf having a go as well. We managed to take out the Stuka there. And now Enzo's Mustang comes in and picks up the kill of the Focker Wolf 109. Or 190. Spitfire and Mustang onto the JU87, but this one, we're not really going to be able to get onto it very easily. I go for it with the Spitfire here, but I only have 160 rounds left. This is pretty much going to annihilate that Stuka with the two Mustang assist. And that was the majority of their Air Force dead now. So we're in a really good position. I'm able to bring in my Typhoon AT here. And that's going to be going for the kill onto the Pack 43, just to allow my uh, Wolverine a little more freedom. Although, unfortunately, what happens is I actually lose line of sight. I'm forced to uh, fall back the Typhoon due to the enemy flag filling, and that's just going to have to get out of there and repair. Do you still manage to uh, pop one of the uh, Gepards over here? And I'm still preparing to take back the tip of the forest. Enzo has stabilised on the left side, is it being pressured too hard at the moment and we're still gaining our plus two so things going really well for us as a team after a bit of a tricky start but we were losing a plus one for a very long time. But now what's going to happen on the right side is Haymakers, Achilles and Wolverines are going to get ambushed by the Stug 4. I believe he did lose at least one of them there trying to push forwards. Actually that's going to be a second so two Wolverines going to be going down there which was unfortunate. Typhoon AT going to again be forced to fall back after it uses its rocket strike onto the Stug 4 there. So I just wanted to stop that from killing off another one of uh, Haymaker's units. Haymaker's going to be bringing in another Achilles there. So Wolverine is uh, busy going again, going to be using its 50 cal to engage the MG42. Going to be using some bombers to blow up the pioneers in the center, allow my rifles a chance against those guys. And Enzo's now going to be bringing in his B26B Marauders to blow up that MG42 squad and also potentially hit the AT weapon that was in the tree line behind it. So I'm currently covering the top of this uh, tree here, the, the forest, all the way down to the right side where Haymaker's maintaining the 50-50 on the map. And this is still allowing us to have 58% territory lead at this point. Enzo making a fantastic job of uh, pushing up on the far left. But now what I'm going to do, saved up some money and I'm going to bring in two AOP carriers with the 203mm mortar barrages because I'm still scared of pushing through this uh, tree line. So what I'm going to do, I saw like loads of units coming towards me. If we go to the neutral perspective you can actually see them all coming through here. I did spot them um, earlier. A couple of my units did die to all of these things and yeah I'm just going to retreat again to the next tree line. So I made back the ground and then I'm going to be forced to retreat again got my tripolstons waiting got this tripolston on the far left side just hoping that doesn't get hit but uh, two B26B marauders going to be coming in they're going to actually kill off one of the squads and stun the rest would have been nice to have an AT or like a infantry squad there to help make them surrender but uh, we didn't notice that obviously this had happened at the time so I wasn't really in a rush to charge towards falchion pioneers because that's pretty much instant doom for any infantry unit that tries that so I'm just going to do it the safe way. I'm going to wait for my off-map artillery. I'm going to bombard the crap out of that top forest. And then I'm going to walk through it. That's pretty much how I decided to do it in the end. We have 8 minutes left on the clock. There is like 8 minutes 30 until the game ends. And there's 8 minutes and 15 seconds until we get a major victory because of the plus 2. Got another AT gun pulled up on this uh, right side. That's brought in a 17 pounder to help out but I didn't actually unload that just yet in the middle 
Again, still covering off as wide as I can. Have made a little bit of ground here and there. Again, just this rifle squad managing to get into that tree line is actually really helpful. This rifle squad is though going to get pinned down by the Pack 43 and more Volsham uh, or more Panzer Grenadiers, so that's annoying. Um, the P-51 Mustangs are going to be coming in to uh, drop bombs onto enemy AT positions and tanks, and my off-map artillery is well away in uh, trying to blow up all of the enemy infantry here. I'm just going to be continuously using off-map here to blow up this forest since I saw so much infantry running there earlier. It's now Focke Wolf 190 going to be coming in, the G1. There's also the ME 109s coming in as well, but I'm pretty sure at this point Elite Source is very scared of even trying to engage any of my fighters over all of this AA. So he is being really careful with the two star ME 109s there to not let that happen, which is really good actually. It's good that he uh, respected that, because otherwise the Mustangs would have won already. The Fulcrum Pioneer coming to the edge of the forest, going to get pinned down by an MMG carrier there and multiple rifle squads. That's exactly what I was waiting for. The Fulcrum uh, player takes one step too far and he gets massacred by fire support units. So. That's uh, what I was hoping would happen. Ready to brew some tanks, sir. 17 pounder is now unloaded and moving up towards the opponents. Firefly and Achilles are going to help take out that Stuck. So that's going to give uh, Haymaker a bit of breathing room on this right side. Now what's going to happen here is these, these storm uh, troopers are going to get uh, burnt to a crisp. Haymaker did have his 25 pounds on target though. Still it does maintain the priest on the right side, so that should be okay for now. In the centre I'm still actually really under pressure from the AI at this point. The only thing with the AI is that they've actually bunched up a lot of these units here. That is one, two, three, four squads of Panzer Grenadiers. There's also a Jag Panzer and a Panther G flanking Haymaker on this right side. So I'm using my 17 pounder to actually stun the Panther G and that is going to get killed. That was really nice and I'm just bringing up the MMG carry here to help with the Panzer Grenadiers. I'm also bringing this one around as well. So the reason I'm not falling back these rifles or these rifles is because I want these Panzer Grenadiers to just continue shooting at them so I don't lose ground. Because if I just go ahead and retreat with the rifles at this point, all that's going to happen is I'm going to be forced to concede all of these hedgerows and tree lines to the enemy. So instead what I'm going to do is bring in the Typhoon and just try and rocket those infantry and force the opponent to fall back. And that's what I did instead. Over on the left side, Enzo is going to be bringing in his uh, Ford GPA OP. My off-map artillery has absolutely peppered these trees, as you can see all the craters amongst the trees. And now I'm going to be uh, moving up with everything I got to take full control of this forest. Got a 16 or 17 pounder covering the road now. Over on the left side. Enzo's still busy fighting with Elite Source, trying to make some ground with his airborne rifles, airborne leader and pathfinders there. He's also got his off-map artillery now, so he can make a dent and continue to walk forwards. Meanwhile on the right side, Haymaker's relying on his fireflies to make us ground, and the Achilles as well. If we jump to the neutral perspective, we can have a little look at what our opponent has. The AI is of course running all of these Panzer Grenadiers backwards and forwards after I'm forcing them to retreat and he does still have the Panzer Werfer here that could be used to uh, assault some of my positions. But if we look more at the right there is a Nebel Werfer. That's in actually a really nice position to uh, stun these Achilles and Fireflies and then have like a Panther come up and take them out. That would be really good. Over on this far, far right, well, these are pioneers and they're not fantastic in the open, so he's got to be careful of the priests as he moves forwards. 
I'm managing to get to the edge of the tree line here now, but there is still Falsham Jaeger, Falsham Pioneers and the Spear Troop going to spot those units and uh, Enzo is taking advantage of the fact there's not too much on the left side. So I can see these uh, Falsham Pioneers and I don't necessarily want to be engaged upon by an AA vehicle, a Stug 3 and a Falsham Pioneer at the same time. So we're going to try and get that rifle squad out of there. These Assault Pioneers just trying to run forwards into range to throw their grenades. And I'm quite happy again trading as an Assault Pioneer squad for a Falsham Pioneer squad. And that's what I'm going for. Off map artillery going to be coming in onto the opposing Falsham or the opposing Panzer Grenadiers on this side of things. I move over the uh, off map artillery to hit that as hard as I can and just relieve myself some pressure in the middle of the map so I can focus on the tip of the forest on the left side because that's really what's going to make us ground at this point. Trying to cross this uh, river would just be like absolute suicide. Either way, Haymaker's coming in there with a nice kill onto the Opel Blitz. My artillery is doing a significant amount of damage to all of the uh, Panzergrenadiers, and there goes a Panzergrenadier. Panzergrenadier squad in the forest. Gonna get hit hard as well. You can see at the amount that of uh, Panzergrenadiers that the opponent, the uh, AI had, is now significantly reduced. So now I'm bringing up the Tripolstons to the edge of the forest. What's going to happen here is the IG-33 is actually going to one-shot my Tripolston there. Enemy off-map did come in on top of that same position as well. But currently there's 50 seconds left on the clock and we are very much approaching the 2,500 points to win. On the left side Enzo's trying to use his 4 GPA OP here to make him some ground alongside his infantry. Even bringing up some uh, bazooka squads now to assist against the uh, heavier units. In the forest, my rifle's still standing strong. Against Falsham Jaegers, I can stand up to him with rifles, that's fine. But against Falsham Pioneers, that's an issue. And one of these uh, Focke-Wolf 190s does manage to get off a 15 HE power bomb that makes a lot of these units surrender which was really annoying and even Enzo's Mustang goes down there to the two ME109s as he gets too close to the enemy air spawn. I'm going to be bringing in uh, my own Spitfires just to uh, cut off some of that infantry but before I get a chance that's going to be the end of the game and after 39 minutes and 47 seconds we've won with the 2500 point conquests so there you go. If we jump to the team perspective, we can see that I did pretty well. 3,451 kills to 1,550 losses. Enzo on the left side there, he lost quite a lot towards the end of the game. Still got 2,586 kills, which was good. And Haybaker on the right side had a bit of a hard time. 2,551 kills to 3,430 losses. But by the end of the game, started to push things back. So that was okay. It says major defeat because I had to reload the replay to get the end screen working again. But yeah, otherwise... I think this was a pretty fun game and it really showed that the 15 Scots are still very useful in the game. They are one of the divisions that was introduced first in the beta and I think they still definitely have a place and are probably one of the more balanced divisions since they've already been adjusted quite a lot since the start of the pre-release beta. If we have a look at the kills. This is all the kills of the Windhund player. Um, a lot of that will be AI as well. And again, it's losses of the Windhund player because that was the player that I had selected at the end of the game. So I can't really look through my kills and losses, but you can sort of tell the story from the uh, team perspective. So I'm going to have to leave it there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I really enjoyed playing the Scots Division again and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>